So I've got this book, Guitarist Progress, which I bought a few years ago, intending to work my way through. And I did, I started it, but uh, I got a bit bored with it, so. And um, I was watching the Mercurial number six a couple of weeks ago, and he, he had somebody come onto his channel uh, in the comment section um, criticizing for his lack of for his lack of um, his admitted lack of knowledge uh, of music theory and how you should be able to read sight read this stuff and uh, if you don't it may, means you're only a quarter of, a, of of the musician you could potentially be. So the, there was an exchange between uh, the Mercurial number six and this YouTuber called Captain Grey or something, <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, the assertion was made by by Captain Gray or whatever his name was um, that his his um, music tutor in college said you must be able to read otherwise you're not a uh, you're an in inadequate musician or some words to that effect I'm paraphrasing. So what I thought to do was I chose a piece at random out of this book. I've never played this before, um, but I've had a look at it, um, and it doesn't seem like something I'm gonna overly struggle with uh, I'm not going to find it easy I'm not the world's greatest sight reader I admit but I can I can um, I can have a go um, what I can tell you is is that this was written by um, a, a German I think a German composer called Saw um, between 1778 and 1839 so his time frame was, was more or less uh, parallel with Beethoven um, there's no tempo mark, but the piece is entitled that and Andantino, which means fairly steady walking, slow walking pace. And we're, we're marked 2-4, um, don't know if you can see that. That means two, two quarter notes in the bar, one and two and one and two and. And we've got one sharp in the key signature. Which tells us that we're in G major, probably, or possibly, uh, in the key of the relative minor, which is E minor. And I can tell you by looking at, having a quick look at the piece, I don't know if you can see that there. There's a sharp down there. A D sharp. Now if there's a D sharp, there's another one there. I, I assume I'm going to, yeah, there's another one down there. Uh, if there's a D-sharp in the key of G major, that's telling us that we're actually in, in the relative minor because D-sharp is the leading note back to E, the tonic note. Um, so, so, for instance, if you're in G major, there's our leading note, the seventh note, F-sharp, back into G. You get that resolution. If you're in the key of E minor, there's your leading note back into the, uh, the tonic note E. So there's that resolution there. So we're in the key of E minor. So we're going to establish if, I, if I'm a, a fully adequate musician. <laughs> Does this mean I, I'm three quarters better than most rock musicians who don't read? I don't know. Okay, so um, I should have said we're also marked MP, which means fairly quiet. Uh, I've got fingerings on here. I've got keyboard uh, fingerboard positions. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I've got forty bars worth of music. I'm not going to do all forty bars.
Okay, I got up to 24 bars. Um, little bit clunky. <laughs> I got some of that wrong too. And um, there's a crescendo in, in bar 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, bar 17 that I missed. Um, and I kind of hacked my way through it, trying to keep a steady tempo. Um, does that mean I'm a fantastic, fully fledged musician? <laughs> um, seriously though, I mean, what what it what it does mean is that, um, in in if I'm if I'm in a situation where I've got a, a room full of people who, who are all and there with this with the sole intention of playing a couple of a piece or two or whatever, and they've never played these pieces before, and it's got to be done there and then. Um, everyone in the room is going to be able to read this stuff more or less um, and as as a guitarist it, it, if you're in that situation it, it makes sense that you should be able to do it so um, it's definitely a useful tool to, to have I think the thing with with, with the likes of um, Mercurial number no. 6 and myself to, to an extent uh, because I've been in that situation in days gone by, you 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 join a band. Everyone in the band um, has learned how to play somehow. That probably doesn't involve um, formal education. So you've got a bass player who who's, who knows um, you know he knows his way around the bass because he's he's learned to play a few songs by by his favourite bands and. Uh, the same for the drummer, most likely, and and myself in days gone by, <clears throat> and and you can you know you can learn a song by playing along with the record, and then you go into a rehearsal studio, and you, and you basically um, regurgitate that as a, as a you know as a, as an ensemble as a band, and it works. I doubt if um, everyone in Led Zeppelin could read. I doubt if everyone in Radiohead could read. Just a couple of examples, but I know some of them can. Um, if you're going to be in that situation where you're going to be in a big band or, or, or you know, a jazz band or whatever, or, or you know, as, um, being a session musician, it's a worthwhile skill to have. Um, I think if you if you if you've known the McCurry number six, he's got he's obviously got a good ear for music. Um, he does those reviews, which uh, <laughs> not reviews, reaction videos, I suppose, um, and. Uh, he he's got he picks out some some really specific details within the music, which is a brilliant skill to have. Um, so there you go, Andantino by Saw. Uh, if if I was going to perform that, you know, I'd I'd probably spend a few weeks. Uh, I'd play I'd play it a couple of hundred times at least, and uh, you know I'd I'd put some of my own little nuances in it. It's a it's a um, it's but slap bang in the middle of the classical period, which which generally means that you 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 play what's what's written, what's described. Um, it's it's only as the the classical period goes into um, a romance, the what's called the romantic period, where subjectivity starts to creep in, and you can you can add your own nuances and and uh, your own stylistic uh, choices. Um, we're, we're probably st steeped in uh, we're probably still in the romantic period heavily romantic but I think rock and roll is is, is, is that style of um, sub subjectivity you know if you take it back to El Elvis performed in a way that was totally unique and there was no rule book to that he did what he, he did what he, he thought he should and he did he did it very well People like Chuck Berry and so on, and and it's 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 continued in that manner. You know, I, I you, you can't imagine ACDC, Angus Young being a sight reader, or or Elvis or Chuck Berry. They they kind of knew their way around it, the the uh, the performance style, and, and 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 they stick to it and they do it really well. And and why not? Um, the best thing I can say really is, is that there's no place for uh, music snobbery.